is Abby's Roadmap to Success. I'm gonna do, this is very different than I normally do, because normally I just summarize the session, but I haven't gone over this, and I wanna do this uh, so the Guardians know how to do it. So in this, um, I'm gonna summarize the session, but I also wanna show you how you can condition a dog to go to the dog bed. So we're gonna call this castle, but you can use any word you want. So the way I do this is I'm just gonna to toss a treat there and say the word castle when she looks it up while she's on the dog bed. I'm gonna wait for her to vacate it and throw another one there. Castle. So remember the words should come right before the action. She goes off it. Castle. Castle. So what I'm doing is saying, go here and get a treat. Castle. And I'm saying the word right before she licks it up. See how now she's starting to linger. Castle. Castle. I like the color of the dog bed. I like white, light cream, or light gray. Castle, so the dog can see the contrast of it. Now she's lingering. Castle. Now I can do this a couple ways. I can just toss the treats like I've been doing. I can lure her onto it like this and ask for a sit. She's not a great sitter. Castle. So even though she's sitting, I'm saying castle because that's what I'm trying to uh, want to get her to do. Uh, the third way I can do it is I can distract her over here and leave a treat on the dog bed. You can't see it because she's blocking it, but there's one on the dog bed. I'm not gonna say anything, but I just did a whole bunch in there, so she's gonna look in a second. She sees it? Castle. So there's three ways to entice the dog to go there. Then what I would do is when she goes there on her own, then I would give her a treat and say castle. You wanna say castle when she gets on it, then you give her a treat afterwards. Now again, she walks away. So uh, one of the rules I talked to the guardians about castle is uh, to have the dog stay on the dog bed when we're eating. So if we're eating on the table, you can't see off camera, it's right over there. I would, uh, first of all, I would do this, castle. Just, there's no food, we're not over there, we're right here, so it's really easy for her to go there. Castle, and there's a reward for her to do it. Once you get to the point where she's kind of lingering and staying there, then I might wait 10 seconds. She's still chewing. I'm not gonna be able to do it in this video because this is gonna be a condensed version of it. And again, now I'm gonna leave another one, not say anything to her. Don't point it out, let her find it on her own. And eventually she'll just start going there over and over again because every time I go over here, there's treats. At first we throw the treats. Come here. Do you see what's on the castle? She is a, uh, uh, a uh, uh, I'm just going to say Westie, but you're not a Westie. Scotty. Uh, Scotty. And uh, uh, my roommate Amanda, uh, or I should say Amanda, who lets me stay at her place, has a Scotty named Wart. And they are very determined. Now, at this point, uh, she may be a little bit uh, full because we've given her a whole bunch of treats. So uh, that's okay. So um, what we're going to do is, uh, I like one of the things I want the Guardians to do is get a couple of dog beds. One of them, um, this is actually technically castle, the cat's bed, where she's using for demonstration purposes. Now in the room, you can't really see it, I'm not gonna show the whole room, but over here in the corner of the room, there's a chair and there's kind of a dead zone in the corner of the room. And so what I'd like the guardians to do is get a dog bed, go to Groupon, if I find the cheapest place to get them, but wherever you wanna get, get a white, light cream or light gray with no pattern dog bed. And then I would just sit over there and then I would throw the treat and have a different name for that one. Let's say we're gonna call that one Jamaica, and we're going to call the one you know, over here, we're going to call this one uh, Cuba. And so uh, we're going to just keep on doing exactly what I showed you there, Jamaica, 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 for about 10, 20 treats. And then, you know, do something else and come back and do it later on. After a while, you should be able to say Jamaica. The dog goes to the dog bed in the corner. Then we give them the treat afterwards. So Jamaica, the dog does it, and then boom, they get a treat. Jamaica, the dog doesn't do it. They don't get a treat. We're not going to repeat the command word. The dog just doesn't get anything. That motivates them to want to listen to us and go where we want them to go. I always want the dogs to have a dog bed whenever there are children involved, or in this case, a couple of dog beds. So we have one in the living room and we have one in a bedroom. So that way, if the room is too busy, we can direct the dog to go to the dog bed over there and relax. I think uh, uh, the dog here nipped one of the children in the face, which really we don't like, but as somebody who was attacked by a dog, from what was described to me, it sounds like the dog was caught off guard. And since the dog hasn't shown any other signs of aggression, I'd have to see the whole totality of it to really give a, a, a certainty. But I, from what I'm seeing, I don't see that this is a dog that's gonna be doing that sort of thing. But we do wanna make sure the dog always feels empowered. If it's too much for me, I go away. And if the dog doesn't know that, then we give them the command word Castle or Jamaica or Cuba, and then the dog can remember, go over there, go away. I'd also like when the kids are here, the dog to get an hour break in, sometimes in the morning, sometimes in the afternoon. 
Dogs sleep a lot. Hello, kitty. Um, and uh, if they don't get enough sleep, that can often cause them uh, to uh, get a little cranky. I, dogs also have something called trigger stacking, which is a whole bunch of things that happen uh, in concert or one after the other, and it creates a, it's like us having a bad day. So if you combine kids being over, which is a disruption to my normal routine, I'm not getting as much sleep. There's a lot of crazy action because the kids are young and very boisterous. And you know, that's could be a trigger stacking sort of scenario. And I think a lack of rules and structure has confused the dog into thinking that it's kind of wild west here. I gotta kind of protect myself and protect the house. And the kids are here, now I'm the, now I'm the nanny and I have to ch you know, correct them and I'm on duty when they're there all the time. I'm exhausted as a dog, I don't get that break. So that's a good example of what we call trigger stacking. There were also a couple indications that she gave that she was a little bit uh, uh, anxious or, or possibly fearful. And so if we help the dog have kind of more of a, uh, a, a confidence in us as humans as providing them with a safe environment, they don't feel that that's their need to do so so much. So um, this is a little bit of a different session than I normally do. I usually have a very regimented thing that I go through. We were just really spitballing here. So I'm, just, I'm trying to recreate my head so uh, we can kind of go through all these things. So um, uh, if the dog ever, as I mentioned in the video, I guess I won't cover that, but if the dog turns its head or backs away, it's a dog's way of saying that they, they don't want to engage. Uh, and so we should stop trying to pet them or engage with them. If the dog's reacting to something, we want to distract them or if we can increase distance. Right now, Abby is looking uh, on the couch, looking out the window and she likes to bark at dogs that are passing by and as well as skateboards and things like that. So what I'd like the guardians to do is get some paper, about a foot of paper to go all the way across, tape it on the uh, inside in the window jams if you can for all these windows. Because if she goes to the window and barks and the thing appears to leave, well, she doesn't realize they were just passing by the house. She thinks her bark made them leave, which validates it will make her bark more. So, we wanna, so I go over there and bark, but I can't see if it made anybody go away or not, and that helps reduce that particular behavior. Uh, now, we also wanna make sure that she's getting good stimulation. So we talked about scent games. Um, or something to Google. We also talked about uh, getting some enrichment items like Kongs and puzzles for her to do, and also DIY enrichment. There's things like you can get like a muffin pan, uh, pan and put treats and all the things and put uh, balls on top of each one. So I nudge, moves the ball aside and they get the treat. Uh, the dogs also, uh, the dog also, I gotta, I'm old, so I gotta, can't sit that way for too long. Uh, so the dog also likes to bring the ball, and sometimes the, we, when the dog brings us things, we think we should take it from them. I showed the guardians how to teach the dog to drop. So what we want to do is when the dog comes to us, hold the treat out in front of the dog's nose and don't give it any commands. When you anticipate the dog is going to open its mouth, you want to say the command word, they drop it, don't show any interest in what they drop, and put the treat in their mouth. Remember the order is the command word precedes the action and the action is followed by a reward. If you do it in that order, you can give the dog a command word, drop, and the dog's like, oh, if I drop this, I'm going to get a treat. And they're happy to do so. Now, um, don't repeat the command word multiple times. The more you say it, the less you mean it. Now, we were also playing fetch, and Abby dropped it once, but she was standing over it. If she's standing over it, that's where I was saying that I'm not ready for this. So when she drops it, wait for her to drop it. She looks at you. She might like the game if you try to reach it. She can snatch it back. So if she's standing over it, wait. Wait for it when she backs away, takes a step away. Then you can pick it up. And I was asking the guardians to tell her to sit. If she, as soon as she sit, then we threw the ball. So sitting gets the humans to throw it. After a while, she'll come and spit the ball out and then sit waiting for you to throw it. Then you can start a long game of time that it takes before you throw it to help her build in a little bit of practice. Hello, kitty. Um, all right, now um, when the kids are here, I would like the dog beds to be uh, the off limits areas uh, as I mentioned a little bit earlier. So basically if the dog goes to the dog bed, come. That's a passive training, we'll talk about that in a sec. Um, so if the, kid, uh, if the dog goes to the dog bed, the kids are not allowed to talk to, engage, or anything, can't even try to call the dog off. Well, I guess we could try to call it off, but we really want to limit that as well. We want the dog to know that if it's overwhelming for me, I just move away. I don't have to nip or bark or growl or, or do any of those fun things. I just move away. And that's why we don't want the kids to go behind the couch or to uh, the other dog bed. Now to help the kids uh, get motivated, I, I mentioned uh, my little uh, positive reinforcement for kids. So you get a little, I have an arts and crafts day next time the kids come over. Uh, Grandma's gonna have a whole bunch of little coffee mugs that are blank and some glue and some glitter and some markers and paint they can paint on them. And then basically just have a day where we mark all the stuff on there, have candy bars for each one of the kids, that is something that they like. And then basically after you're done with uh, putting their names on all of them, just and they're, while they're trying to say, you know what? The dog guys, the people that came over, David Loris had told us something interesting that when we pet our dog, that's how we say thank you. Would you say thank you before or after I give you this candy bar? I'm like, uh, before, you wanna think about that? Like, after, that's right, here you go. Thank you, Grandma, exactly. So from now on, if you wanna pet Abby, we'd like you to tell her to sit. Only one time though. 
If she, if she does sit, then you pet her to say thank you. You don't have to hey, say thank you, just the petting means thank you. And every time you do that, and tell me, I'm gonna take an M&M, and I'm gonna go put it in your jar. And then at the end of dinner, or the end of the day, or whatever the visitors, whatever it is, the kids get to go and gift all those M&Ms. Now you can put a limit in, you can only do one per minute, or one every five minutes, or whatever the case may be, so they don't do. I just petted, you know, I just did it 25 times. Uh, but you can also use this uh, if the dogs are doing interact, inactive behavior. Oh, it, buddy, if you go if you go near her when she's uh, when she's on her dog, <laughs> you lose all your M and M's for the day. Oh, so now you give the kids a motivation to want to move away. Now, there we go. When Abby is staring and stiff, that's uh, like the cat or somebody outside at the doorway or whatever it is. That's when we're going to try to call her away and get her to not continue staring because that's not going to be a healthy behavior. Um, so right there, I just wait. Abby's just kind of brought out the ball over. She's standing up on the chair, and, and she wants him to, uh, the guardian to drop it, but I would wait passively for her to drop it. I can't quite see because she's black and she's got a black chair. But as soon as she drops it, wait for her to get down. Then I'd pick up the ball. I would say, sit. And as soon as she sits, then I would throw it. But throw it the instant that she, that as soon as she does that. Sit. 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 But only say it once. The more you say it, the less you mean it. Um, so it, if you do what I want, you get a reward. If you don't do it, no, there you go. So she's interested. So say it, say it again. Sit. Lean back in your chair. Now hold the ball up and say S-I-T. Sit. Sit. Just once. Now, in Addie's defense, she doesn't really, uh, Abby, I should say, I, uh, our booking is named Addie. Abby is, uh, doesn't know a lot of tricks or commands. So that's why I went over the clicker, and I'm going to give you it as a clicker. I'd like you guys to do some clicker training with her. And that's uh, something uh, I started off with I didn't uh, right before I went through this video. Now, she's really into the ball, so I'm not going to do it right now. But in a minute, I'm going to show you how to do a little, use the clicker to uh, teach her to do the thing that you want, them to, want her to do, if I can remember where I put the clicker. Um, all right. So basically, um, yeah, I can't remember where I put it. Oh, it's right here. All right. Um, so what, what the guardians do, and I would just put it in your lap and just kind of ignore. So if you do what I want, you get a reward. And be careful because the cat's right here. You don't want to throw it and have her chasing at the cat because that can create a problem. So if you throw it, I would probably throw it that direction. Um, also, remember for the cat, if she is staring at the cat or trying to go towards the cat or bully the cat, we want to let her know that we don't like, not that we don't like that. We want to distract her. We want to make sure we disagree with that. But we don't want to punish or anything. So I would really, as soon as you see her staring, there you go, throw it. Perfect. The cat. Included. No, sure. I saw. Um, and so uh, we want to try, the more that we manage the situation, the less that she needs, thinks that she needs to. Abby! So if you want to use a clicker for training, so I click for the action. Now, I already did what's called priming the clicker, which I'd like the guardians to do. I'm going to leave this clicker with them. I'd like her, them to do it maybe two or three more times. So for about 10 treats, you click, then go to the treat. That was actually a really good timing, ironically, but not intentionally. So I just click. Let me give the dog a treat. If you click really close to the dog, sometimes that startles her. She was uh, sound sensitive, a couple things. So make sure you have a little distance. Eventually you can get it closer and closer. So if I want to use this to teach a dog to sit, I'm going to go, I'm going to lure her to sit, and then I give her the treat. Or if I'm going to use the clicker, I'll use this treat that you didn't realize was there. Come here. So, so that I clicked when the butt hit the ground, then she got the treat. I like, the, I like using the clicker in this case because when she's staring at the cat, um, I wouldn't use the clicker to get her attention, but uh, using the clicker to, uh, to help her associate coming to the human is what got me a treat. Sitting down is what got me a treat, uh, whatever the case may be. So the click is when the butt hits the ground, but if I want to transition. So first I would go like this. So I lure her to SIT and I'm going to click when her butt hits the ground. It's like that's not and then she gets the treat. And eventually what I want to do, without the clicker, sit. Uh, actually, that wasn't great timing. Let's try that again. Come here, Abby. Sit. So I anticipated she was about to sit. I said the word sit, and then her butt hit the ground immediately after, and then she got the reward. So that motivates her to want to do it. One of the things I want the guardians to do is to, and this is something else that you can Google, just Google uh, uh, positive clicker training for dogs. Um, so you can use the clicker as a tool to help you get to where you want to go. I'd like to see the guardians alternating. 
picking Saturday, Sunday, Monday, whatever the day of the week it is, where one of them says, okay, I'm gonna to go to YouTube or Google or wherever it is, I'm gonna teach the dog how to do a circle. And then uh, once the dog knows how to do that trick, all week long, you wanna go outside, you want me to pet, you want to couch, circle, circle, circle. After a while, you just look at the dog and she does a circle. Then the, the next week, the other guardian takes over and they teach a different command. The more commands the dog knows, the more confidence they're gonna have. I think that uh, lower self-esteem is also a factor that's impacting Abby. And so the more that we can help her uh, by giving her new tricks and skills is gonna be beneficial. So um, like for the drop commands. So when she brings over a ball, hold the treat out. As soon as she, uh, you, she's about to drop it, as soon as she starts opening her mouth, say the word drop, pop the treat in her mouth and don't pick up the ball. Prove to her, I'm not trying to steal your stuff. I just want you to drop it. And then as soon as she moves away, you can pick it up, tell her to sit, and when she sits, throw it. Um, so if you can teach her, I'd like each one of you to teach her at least four new commands so that at the end of the thing, she has at least eight commands. I like to see dogs having a minimum of 10 different command words. And we talked about passive training, which is a nice, easy way to help the dog learn these things. And passive training is just anticipating the dog's about to do it right here. Come. She was coming this way anyways. But within that, remember, they learned through repetition, consistency, and good timing. You have two seconds. So she was coming here. Now, she was coming. She's playing the game, so I wouldn't do it in this concert. But when I'm watching TV and she walks up to me, when she's one foot away, I'd say the word come, and then I reach over and pet her. If I see she's about to sit, I'm going to say the word sit, and then she sits, and I pet her under her chin. We're celebrating the things that she does, and we're observing, and when she, right before she does the action, we say whatever the command word is, then it's followed by the action, and then she gets the reward. It's, all it takes is really a little bit of observation. Now, I'd like the guardians to make a list of the official command words. Whatever they are is fine. But that way, one person doesn't say come, the other one say here. Uh, we want to just, uh, it's just a lot faster for the dog to know them all. Now, and uh, right there, I would just lean back in your chair. If you say it once, playing hard to get works great for dog training. So he leaned back in the chair, and then she came over to him, and her body is a little bit less stiff. Now, hold it up and say SIT again. Sit. Just wait. Put it back in your lap. Now at this point, just watch and observe it. As soon as she SITs, throw the ball. Don't, don't say it, just wait for her. Now you could, if you anticipate she's about to see, you'd say sit and then throw it. But in this case, she's just staring at him and she's just like using a Jedi mind trick. Trying, and don't, again, don't engage. You gotta play hard to get. So she's kind of playing hard to get with you. You want the sit. By giving you the sit, then I, don't, then I lose my leverage. So you have the leverage because you have the ball. So you just wait and when she, it's the instant she sits, you throw that ball. It'll take a little bit of time and practice and patience, but eventually she'll bring you the ball and then drop it and then sit down because that's what gets her what she wants. Um, we also talked a little bit about uh, something called petting with a purpose, which is really what it sounds. It's petting your dog for a reason. So if she comes up to you and she nudges you or barks at you or scratches at you, she's kind of telling you what to do. Instead, we give her a counter order, boom, nice. We give her a counter order, tell her to sit, provided she knows how to sit. And if she sits in that two second window, then we pet her. Remember when petting a dog, we like to pet in this oval area here. Under the chin is ideal, uh, but on the shoulder and on the chest and also petting a dog in a slow circle about this speed can be very calming or relaxing for a dog. Uh, we wanna reach, avoid reaching over the head. Uh, a lot of insecure, uh, dog, insecure dogs don't like reach, having us reach over their head. Uh, let me see, so for pet, going back to petting with a purpose, the Abby will recognize if I tell the humans what to do by barking at them, they don't do anything anymore. But they always, if they tell me to sit, and if I sit, then they pet me. What if I just go and sit in front of them to start this whole thing off? That's exactly what we're looking for. When she does, reach over and pet her, and then pet her as much or as little as you want. Now she's sitting to prepay and to indicate, I'd like you to engage me, I'd like something from you. This is a great way to form a health, what I call a healthy leader-follower dynamic. I'm asking for things versus demanding things. And it's important for dogs, just as it is for children, to recognize that I don't get everything I want when I want it. I have to earn it by doing my chores or eating my food or being nice to my sister or whatever the case may be. And then I get those platitudes. And passive training, which is really what I call celebrating the things the dog does, away, is, does that I want, is the same thing you do with kids. If we have two kids and we notice one of them shares something with the other one, we make sure we spotlight that and reward that. Same thing works for dogs. We just are not very attentive and we only pay attention when the dog does what we want. The dog walks up to us, we ignore it. It lays down at our feet, we ignore it. Drop the ball, we ignore that. But as soon as it starts barking, we correct that. Scratching, correct that. Jumping at the door, correct that. Good attention, bad attention, very similar for dogs. So the more you sell it and pet your dogs for the things that you want, celebrate those things, the more the dog will do those things. That's why I use the watchword of celebrate for passive training. Passive training is when the dog does the action 
and you're just simply recognizing and rewarding it. Just like if one child lets the other child use their iPad with a video game without being told to or asked, you make sure she, so you pay attention to that. So that's why I call uh, passive training. The watchword I use is celebrate. So let's say that Abby walked up to me right here and I didn't see it. Remember, they only have two seconds. We want to pet dogs for that. So if she came to me, I could pet her and say the word, I would say come first and then pet her. And that will make a stronger response for her to come to me in the future. So if I'm not paying attention, Abby's walking up and somebody else says celebrate, I just turn and I just start petting her immediately. Come. That's passive training right there. So I didn't ask her to come. She happened to be walking by. I just, uh, said, I should have said come and then pet her. Bad timing. Uh, but so come. Sit. Uh, it would have been better if you said sit before you reach for it. Right there, throw it. Throw it. Oh, there we go. Um, all right, so celebrating or passive training is waiting for the dog, or observing the dog when it does what you want. So wait, just wait. When she, say drop right before she drops it. Drop it. No, no, you said it before. Now sit. Drop. There you go. So drop. we want to anticipate. And it's hard, sometimes that's hard to do. That's why I went over the clicker, and I think the clicker is really going to help you guys out with that. So, um, all right, so that's passive training. And we will use the watchword of celebrate. Celebrate means you're missing an opportunity to reward the dog for something we want. I think it's under the footstool. Um, and so that'll make, yep. Uh, and so that after a while, the dog will want to do those actions more and more because that's what gets your attention. Sit. Now, petting with a purpose. Now, your guardian's got his hand back here. He said, sit. Well, he's already wound up. I would put the ball down here and lean back in the chair. And now he's playing a little bit hard to get. See how that tail's wagging a little bit? Now she's approaching him. Now say, sit. Sit. And just wait. And just kind of see her without, without directly looking at her. And as, but as soon as she, don't take your eyes off her. I mean, watch her suddenly. But as soon as she said, throw it. After a while, she'll figure this out. And don't move until she SITs. Uh, now, the other thing I went over with petting with a purpose, the watchword I, I use for that is uh, paycheck. Because I consider petting a dog our way of paying them. Now, passive training is waiting for the dog to offer the behavior voluntarily without any influence from you. Petting with a purpose is you directing the dog. Now the dog can come up and demand attention, but you're directing them into, into a sit or a down. I usually don't recommend teaching dog to shake. Don't teach her to shake with the commands you're gonna teach. I find that really uh, confuses dogs and they put their paws up on everything. So, um, so if she comes up to you and uh, nudges you, you tell her to sit. If she sits, then you put her under her chin or wherever you want, except for here. And, uh, and or actually you say sit, she, pet, she sits and then you pet her. And pet her as much or as little as you want. If she doesn't sit, there's no correction. I'm not going to say it 20 times, but you don't get my attention. I'm back to doing whatever I was doing before. And then she'll start coming and sitting in front of you to prepay for that attention. When she does, boy, you better pet her for that. And she's kind of dancing around her guardian right now because she really wants him to throw the ball. He has motivation for her. So if you want me to do what you want, I'm only asking for an SIT. Now, she doesn't know this yet because he's only been starting to play this. But he asked her to SIT and she didn't do it, so she's just kind of staring at him. That's why he's being observant. As soon as she SITs, you're going to hear the ball, see the ball whiz by, and then she's going to run because we're rewarding her for doing the thing that we want her to do. I think in this case, I think that she's been, I think she's been conditioned to demand things, and then that's not realistic because she can't always get everything that she wants. Uh, let me see. Uh, make sure you put that paper on the window. I think I mentioned that. Yeah. I'd also like you to get a snuffle mat to feed her for out of. Um, and as soon as she walks away from the snuffle mat, just pick it up and put it up somewhere. If you're feeding out of a bowl and she goes and eats a little bit and she walks away, pick up what's in the bowl, dump the bowl empty, but it's important to put that bowl back down on the ground so she recognizes the bowl is empty every time she walks by. And then when you put food in the bowl, oh, that's a special occasion. Um, I would also, uh, let me see, uh, get, you might want to get a lick mat, um, uh, some Kongs, uh, like I said, those enrichment, the treating, uh, uh, dispensing toys. The walks I'd like to see breaking up right now, she goes far anywhere from a th one to three mile walk, but I'd rather see three 20 minute walks than one one hour walk. So uh, for dog exercise, it's best sprinkled throughout the day multiple times in shorter intervals than one long interval only once a day because she's gonna, gonna sleep and recharge her batteries. Um, anything else you guys want me to go over? I don't think so. I think everything just, yeah. yeah. You can edit. Uh, no, I'm just, I don't edit it. I'm just going to throw the whole thing up there. I don't have time to do the editing, unfortunately. But that's all right. This is just for you guys. Other people will watch it as well. Um, well, the, the, I do, do, do have a real quick message. Make a list of the official command words, though, and say vocabulary if somebody's using a different version of the word. Come? Vocabulary. Oh, thank you. Here. 
Go ahead. And then everyone has to be consistent. We want everybody to use the same word. That will accelerate the, the learning. Okay. So right now I've got the ball. Um, I, I want her, if she wants me to, to, to throw it, obviously. So but I've given the command word, and she didn't do it right away. So how often would you... So she doesn't know, she's not, she's, well, she's a Scotty, so she's not, she's kind of got to do her own thing. So she needs that motivation. So what I would do is maybe grab about 15 treats, and I would just have a treat and lure her into that sit. As soon as she sits, and then give her that treat. And I clicked in, and we only did a little bit, but her ear cocked toward me. Abby, come. Abby, puppy, puppy, puppy. Higher pitch voice is, is going to be something that's going to be more appealing and get the dog's attention. Um, I'm glad I remember this. So what I'd like, uh, so you started to move. So he, she started to sit. He started to cock his uh, uh, arm as soon as she did the motion. Now throw it. So you have to wait for her to do the act first, then you throw it. Now what I like when the kids come over, I'd love to have the kids take the dog out for a walk and give and have a whole, a whole bunch of treats. And we go out on a walk. Maybe we walk a little bit, maybe 10 paces. And then one of the kids says SIT. And she, if she hits, sits, they click, and then they give her a treat. And then they hand the leash to that child. And that child walks for maybe 10 or 15 paces. The next child comes up while one child's holding the leash. The other one says sit. And then if they do, grandma or grandpa clicks. Then the child gives it a treat. And then they take the leash and they walk a little bit more. So we make a little bit of a game walking uh, and when they first arrive. So that's a nice way to kind of introduce things out in an outdoor environment so that the dogs are more relaxed. Then what I'd like the uh, guardians to do at some point in the trip is to get make a circle on the floor here and have, give each one of the kids about five or seven treats and practice a little recall game. So one of the so the first time grandma's gonna be in charge and she's gonna say, all right, uh, I'm gonna point at the person. When I point at you and only you, then you're gonna say the dog's name. And when she comes to you and she's a foot away from you, you're gonna say the word come and then you're gonna give her that treat. And then uh, when that person's done, they cross their arms like this and they look up if she's still here and then grandma points to the next person. Well, after you've done this a couple times, you can make one of the kids the ringleader and they go say, Jamie, you know, Amy, or whatever it is. And so they get a uh, practice saying who's coming. Now, if, if Abby comes to me and I'm not the one who's supposed to be calling her, I'm going to cross my arms, I'll look up, and I'm just going to disengage. I'm not going to say no. I'm not going to do anything. I'm just going to become boring. I'm going to say, you should go to the person that, you, that called you. And if you do, then you're going to get a reward for that. And after a while, the dog, this becomes a game. The dog will run, zoom back and forth to each person. And then the, dog's, uh, the dog is listening to the human. Wonderful. You see already, we've been doing this video, now she's starting to sit faster and faster because as soon as she sits, you're throwing it. So we talked earlier in the session, what's the dog's motivation to listen to you? Well, this is a great motivator. Do what I want and you'll get something you want. Well, the dog's like, deal. Now I know what it is I need to do to communicate to get what I want. I think in this case, I think she was a little bit frustrated and a little bit confused just because the humans are inconsistent, which a lot of people are. All right, um, so um, now if you have any other questions on anything else, let me know. If you want to have one of my trainers come out and work with you guys and teach her some stuff, I'm happy to send somebody out. Um, I'd rather have you guys at least try to do that at first because it's, it's, I think it's better when it comes from the guardians because it really helps the dog see them acting more like leaders. Um, but if you, uh, 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 if you have trouble with that, like I said, let us know and we're happy to send somebody out. You had something else? Well, that was my question. You kind of addressed it. If, if we... One of us misremembers something, and we're, you know, discussing. Oh, it was this. No, he said this. He said that. Just call or text me. Do 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 we? You guys gonna have my cell phone number? Just text me. Text. Um, yeah, I will be mad at you if you have a problem and don't tell me because I can't help you if you don't text me. Uh, but uh, if I have to send somebody out, I charge for that. But it, uh, phone calls or texts, I'm happy to do that. Um, and like I said, if you have problems with the cat, she seems pretty, uh, he seems pretty chill, but uh, Laura does work with cats. And, uh, but yeah, I think you guys have all the tools you need to. I think the dog was just a little bit confused. And now that she kind of knows what it is that you want, it's just going to be a, a matter of the humans kind of get in the habit of doing these things. So it'll take you about a month or so. So you use the watchwords we talked about here in this video. You might want to take some notes from this video about, you know, saying pass, uh, celebrate, saying uh, 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 paycheck, saying vocabulary. Uh, I also say repeat or rerun if you're using the same word over and over again. Um, last little thing I'm, I'm going to talk about, I'm going to use it for the keyboard, but you can use this for a lot of things like the skateboard or whatever it is coming by. So if the dog has a problem with something, you want to make that an easy activity. And so what we do is we take uh, the activity, make it the easiest version of that activity, then we slice it up into a whole bunch of little sections. And we practice one section over and over again until the dog's got that one. Only then we, only then we have a step two. So uh, for the keyboard, sometimes the dog comes up and bark, uh, barks and, and bites at the guardian when he's playing the keyboard. 
Well, dogs have better ears than we do, so there might be a lot of fidelity and stuff like uh, sounds that are going on that we can't hear. So if you play a note and the dog kind of uh, freaks out, turn, uh, recognize what that note is, remember what it is, and then come back and grab some treats, play that note, but turn the volume down to a really low level so the dog doesn't bite you. And so ding, C sharp, treat, C sharp, treat, C sharp, treat. Then you can turn the volume up a little bit more. Louder C sharp, treat, louder C sharp. And eventually that C-sharp treat is getting harder to say like Sally and C-sharp. But eventually it gets to the point where that's, you can play that same note at its full intensity. The dog associates that as an indicator that a treat is going to come next. So um, uh, like for skateboards, uh, you would have the dog just simply put the skateboard on the floor. The dog just looks at the skateboard and then you could click for the look at it and then give the dog a treat. And at first the dog is going to accidentally look at it, but eventually then it's going to start looking intentionally at it. And then we can actually have the skateboard outside with one of the kids maybe just standing on the skateboard. And the dog looks at it, we click, and give it a treat. And we do that a couple times. Now we have the kid moving a little bit, and then the dog looks at it, we click, and then give the dog a treat. And gradually, as we go over and over and over again, gradually we have the kid, uh, the kids moving the skateboard and moving it faster and faster. But remember, if the dog barks or reacts, that's too intense. Uh, we got to move too far too fast, so it goes slow. This is a little bit more advanced, so if you have problems with this, let us know. We can send Laura or some, myself, we just have somebody come back out and work on skateboards and stuff in the spring. This is a little bit more advanced. Really what I want you guys to focus on is creating a healthy leader follower dynamic, improving the communication, and giving the dog motivation to want to listen to you so we don't have any of those miscommunications. All right, uh, Abby, 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 Abby. Can I have the ball? Yeah, I was just gonna suggest it. <laughs> this is my buddy, Abby, sit. And these are Abby's, this is Abby's roadmap to success. Remember, everything you do trains your dog, only sometimes you mean it. <laughs>